This PowerPoint presentation will look at, at the relationship of painting to photography and show how a number of artists since the late 19th century have used photography not only to inform their painting, but to actually become the subject of painting. In the late 19th century, artists like Edgar Degas used photography, slide two, to act as an aid memoir in the creation of their paintings and pastel works. Pierre Bonnard was a keen photographer and used many of his photographs to provide a jumping off point that would assist him in the composition of his paintings. For example, if we look at the painting of his wife, Martha, bathing, slide number seven, we can see the effect of the photographic image on this painting in its representation of form and space. There is a flatness to the image and Bonnet has tilted the picture space vertically, as in Japanese and Chinese art, so that we read the pictorial space of near to far from the bottom of the painting to the top of the painting. These elements all demonstrate the photographic source of this painting, and indeed a photograph taken by Bonnet of this particular pose is in existence and was sold at auction recently. Turning to another artist who used photography in this case, newspaper photographs, the British artist Walter Sickert, slide number eight, creates a wonderful tension between the implicit flatness of the image of Tiller girls dancing and the exaggerated perspective in scale of the dancers, which is contrasted with the flatness and verticality of the theatre curtains behind them. In the 1960s painters became increasingly interested in using photographs in their work, and some painters made photography the subject of their work. For example, the American painter, Chuck Close, slide 9, produced large-scale oil paintings that replicate photographs by way of various techniques of soft-focus blurring of oil paint, and in some cases, the use of spray guns to apply paint that enabled the painter to create effects of depth of field that one sees in photography. The French painter Jacques Monnery made paintings in the 1960s and since that refer to cinematic sources of photographic imagery, whereby the artists create montages, as in cinematic montages, of diverse images that are collaged together in a cinematic narrative. By the 1960s artists were sourcing photographic imagery from any number of mass media contexts. For example, the British artist, Malcolm Morley slide number 12 made paintings such as this, which were taken from mass circulation advertising. The artist in this case reinforces the photographic origins of this painting by placing it within a white border around the edge of the canvas. The artists that we have discussed so far in the 1960s can all be loosely grouped together under the umbrella of pop art, which used popular imagery from the new information image technologies that became increasingly available in the 20th century. Pop art was actually initiated in Britain by artists such as Richard Hamilton, Eduardo Palozzi, and Rainer Banham. However, it was American artists who took the ideas of pop culture and brought them into fine art with the greatest degree of confidence and power. In the work of Andy Warhol, we see the photographic image in this case a publicity still of Marilyn Monroe being used as an iconic image with almost religious connotations. The image is initially printed on canvas using a silkscreen printing process and then Warhol, or his assistants, applying flat, acrylic paint, the color pink for example, in the background and in the eyelids. Pop art really reaches its zenith in America the 1960s Correspondingly, in Europe, artists were also exploring the possibilities of photography in their painting, but from a different perspective. The German artist, Gerhard Richter, who was born in East Germany and received his art training there, moved to Düsseldorf, West Germany in the early 1960s. With other artists in that city he formed a movement called Capitalist Realism. This was a direct response to Anglo-American pop capitalist art. So in slide 14, we see Richter taking an everyday image of a crowd of people, presumably in Germany, and subjecting the painting of that image to a photographic painting technique, whereby the artist blurs the image of the crowd once he has painted it, using a soft, flat, dry brush, which gives the painting a soft, out-of-focus feel, but also a sense of time, memory, and distance. 
This sense of distance is echoed in Richter's later painting of his wife and child. Slide number 15, where the blurring has been taken to such a degree that the image is almost defaced. This process creates a deferral of the image. That is to say, we cannot grasp the image immediately, and this deferral leads to a sense of distance and loss and memory. Narratives in photography and cinema were important elements in a group of paintings that British artist Nicholas Wyatt made in the early 2000s, where the imagery in the paintings was taken from cinematic films. In the case of the painting shown in slide 16, entitled Room of Crosses, the imagery is based upon a still image from the 1974 film, The Conversation, by Francis Ford Coppola. More recently, the Polish contemporary artist Wilhelm Sasnow has produced haunting, elegiac images from various photographic sources, some of which are personal photographs. In the painting showing at slide 17 the artist has created a monochrome image, redolent of black and white photography, and has pared down, edited and simplified all unnecessary detail to create a haunting and striking image with its own personal narrative that clearly is derived from photography. Recent painting, like we see in the images of Sassnall and Richter, reveal a way of treating the photographic image, which does not diminish the physical qualities of oil paint. So, in the case of both these painters, the physical surface of the paintings is made apparent in the way that they use oil paint, for example, in pasto passages of wet into wet painting. This reconciliation of the physical medium of oil paint and the photographic image is also apparent in the work of the contemporary American artist, Eric Fischel, who came to prominence in the late 1970s, early 1980s, with his subversive images of middle-class suburban America. Fischel has continued to paint this milieu in which he lives, and in the painting at slide number 18 he demonstrates a physical use of oil paint, but one which is articulated through the vision of photography. So, for example, at the very top of the painting we see the artist has used wet into wet blending techniques to create a blurred out of focus appearance to the sand dune, and this of course references depth of field which appears in photography. Additionally, the way shadows are painted on the group of figures quite clearly show a flattening of form that photography confers on the painted image. However, the flat surfaces of photography are both enlivened and given substance by the way Fischl handles the painting of the form of the figures and their clothing and bears some resemblance to previous American painters like George Bellows. To summarize, the paintings that appear in this presentation give a brief albeit incomplete survey of the various ways photography has been adopted by painters since the middle of the 19th century and illuminate the difference between for example the hot painted physical surfaces of Claude Monet's paintings, which are based on direct experience, and the mediated cool images that photographically based painting produces, as has been demonstrated in the work of artists like Chuck Close, Andy Warhol, Gerhard Richter, and Wilhelm Sassnall. If you are interested to learn more about the history of painting, please visit our YouTube channel The Art Class Online, or visit our website, The Art Class Wimbledon.